Okay, let's check we're live in the right place a minute. Uh, let's just refresh my tablet screen. For anyone who's joining me um, on the replay, do say hi in the comments, that would be lovely. Um, let's just make sure we are actually... Are we in the right place? We might not be. Come on. Oh, I've got a couple of people joined. If you're joining me um, live, then please do say hello. Ah, there we go. I am live in the right place. Hurrah. Hello, Liz. Hello. Brilliant. Oh, good. We are in the right place. That's always my first concern is that I've gone live in my personal page instead of in the actual Facebook group and then nobody would have a clue what I was going on about. So so that's a bit of a really. Hello Sheena, hi. Wonderful, okay. We've got some stuff going on, this is good. I uh, just want to be able to see my laptop at the same time. How is everybody? If you're joining me live, pop on and say hi so that I know that you're here, that would be lovely. And we'll just give it a few minutes while um, people are joining. Have a quick slurp of my tea. It's been a really busy day today, so um, I'm hoping that everything is going to work as planned and that I've got everything out that I need to. But um, I'll be honest, I've been in Coventry at a, a conference um, all day today for work work. Um, and um, so I've, it's just been a bit of a rush since I've got back. So um, but anyway, if you are on here, say hello. That would be lovely. And I'll have a quick slurp. I can see lots of people joining, which is wonderful. If you're joining, do say hi so I know you're here. I can see mum's here. Hello. I can see Sally's here. Hello. And if you're crafting tonight as well, do um, let me know. Hi, Bernie. Hiya. Welcome. Yeah, I'd love to know if you're if you're planning on crafting uh, live tonight as well. That would be great. Um, for those of you who are um, joining early on, um, or if you're on the replay, you'll see behind me, I've got my embossing machine out. Hi, ma'am. Um, so um, there, there is optional embossing tonight if you want to. And um, there's some a background that you can emboss on the zigzag card. Um, so if you want to find out some uh, mosaic or uh, a wall pattern, or anything that would be a background. I mean, you could probably use kind of like um, leaves and vines and things if you want to. Um, but hi, Audrey. But if you don't want to emboss, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, you can um, you can go without embossing if you want to. Um, it, you can just go plain background. Bernie says she's going at crafting. Fab and Liz is crafting. Can I explain how to join? with you in the October offer. Yeah, I absolutely can. Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, actually, funnily enough. Uh, Mum's crafting, fabulous. Wonderful. We've got loads of keen, eager beavers tonight. That's wonderful. Fantastic. Okay. So um, tonight we are going to be using... Evelyn is going to correct... Evelyn's here tonight, by the way. She wasn't here last month, but she is here tonight. Uh, she's going to correct my French pronunciation as I never did French at school and I'm rubbish at it. Um, so it's from pages in the main catalogue if you want to look things up. Hi, Marion. She's crafting too. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, if you're one of the people that likes to follow along with the products of the catalogue as well so you can see what there is in the suite, we're using from the main catalogue pages 30 and 31. It's called... Am I going to get this right, Evelyn? Lace shops? Yeah. Mm, she went, mm. So that's obviously probably rub rubbish pronunciation, but never mind. Anyway, it's uh, Lace shops suite, as you probably guessed from um, looking at the papers that are in your pack. Um, so as usual, the suite's got stamps and dies and um, the papers is the main thing we're focusing on. I wanted to just briefly talk about the dies because the dies will cut out the stamps, the stamped images in the suite, but they also cut out the patterned papers that you've got in your kit. But also in this catalogue, those of you who've got a paper copy already of the Christmas catalogue, on page 19, you've got a little stamp set called Shop the Town. 
that's got like a Christmas shopping street scene going on that you can build. And the dies cut out the shop in this this set as well. So um, it cuts out uh, the dies inlay shops in the main catalogue and shop the town in the Christmas catalogue, just in case you were wondering. So there we go. So that's that. Um, other bits of news you probably already realised as well, because I've been posting about it like mad, that the Lay Shop Suite is the suite share for September. So you've only got a couple more days to say if you want this suite. Um, as usual, you're getting um, papers and matching cardstock. I've already done a video, um, which should be out tonight, I think, on YouTube, actually. Um, which is for a fancy fold card using this suite that I will show you at the end of this evening. Um, it's uh, just a slightly more advanced fancy fold than the ones that we're going to do tonight, but it is really easy to do actually. Um, and if you, my top tip, as I say at the beginning of the video, is cut out all your cardstock first and then, and the measurements are on YouTube as well, um, and then do all, make it up after you've cut all the pieces out. Um, because actually once you've got all the pieces ready to go, it's really easy to assemble and it's a really fun, fun fold to do. And I'm sure um, those of you who, are, who love to kind of adapt to these things, um, I'm pretty sure that you'll all come up with amazing, brilliant other things that you can do with this fancy fold. So um, if you come up with another design using different themes and patterns and what have you. Oh, there you go. Mum's saying it's already on YouTube. Thank you. That's wonderful. <coughs> She's already watched it. Fabulous. So yeah, if you can... Um, if you do adapt it and, and make something else with it, then I'd love to see it. So please, please, please post photos of, um, of what you've done and either tag us in at Papercraft with Jenny or um, you can uh, put it in the comments of my sharing posts that I, I put on later on this evening. So I'd love to see what you do with it. So that'd be great. OK, so that is... Sweet share, like I said, for the rest of this month, so only a few days, um, is Lace Shops. From October, so from, what's October? Sunday? Sunday, I think it is. Um, it's going to be Christmas sweet shares all the way to Christmas. So we're going to have one for October, one for November, one for December. So um, if you fancy a, a, a bit of a sweet, but not a whole sweet, then um, for your Christmas crafting, then there will be three different options um, heading up to Christmas as well. So that's quite exciting. And I'll send you all details about that. Anyone who's on the mailing list, you'll get all the details about that. So that's cool too. Okay, so Liz was asking about the joining offer. So I think it was yesterday or the day before. Yesterday. No, it was yesterday. We found out that... Um, it's very unusual at this time of year um, for Stamping Up to announce a joining offer. So buying the starter kit and joining as a demonstrator. Um, and those of you who joined in have joined during September, we didn't know anything about this. We did not know it was coming. Um, so it's a great deal whenever you join, I have to say. Um, normally you would get £130 worth of product of your choice for £99. Now, this year is special because it's Stampin' Up's 35th anniversary of uh, starting the business worldwide. So they have just announced a joining offer, which means that you can, I know, I know who's just sent that grumpy face. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Um, uh, yeah, so there, there is um, the new joining offer is tied in with their 35th anniversary. So for the month of October, doesn't start till Tuesday, actually, the 3rd, um, but it, it's for the whole of October from, from Tuesday. There is a new joining offer and you can choose, you can either choose to have 35% more product for your £99 or you can choose to have you can choose to pay £35 less. <laughs> so it's one way or the other. But as it's not out until Tuesday, I've got all the detail ready to send to you in an email. Um, and I will post it on the Facebook group as well. But I will send it to everybody in an email. So you can either have 35 more or 35 or pay 35 less and get the same amount. So whichever way you go, um, 
it's a brilliant a brilliant offer it really is um so um yeah that's that's coming out during october so what i would say is if in the next couple of days you want to place an order not the sweet share because the sweet share is with me if you want the sweet share you're still going to have to order that through me but if you were thinking of placing an order that was going to go anywhere near the 99 pounds mark in fact to be honest anywhere near the 60 pounds mark um it's really worth waiting and seeing if you'd rather get it as a a starter kit offer and uh, join as a demonstrator instead loads of benefits of being a demonstrator which i've said many times before on here um but the in terms of the discount that you get you get 20 percent for at least three months after that um so uh and that's on everything that you order then um when you place your own orders as a demonstrator so um it's it's well worth it um anyway like i said there'll be loads more details about that coming out um in the mail shots that i'll be sending via email so and if you've got any more questions about it once you've read that obviously don't hesitate to email me get in touch and i'll um i'll explain it all to you okay wonderful right then time to get on with some crafting i think so i'm going to turn my various lights on oh i should have uh, one final bit of uh, one final plea as well not plea but a bit of news i suppose is um i apologize now if there's a lot of teenage clattering about later on because alexander's out on a driving lesson he hasn't had any supper yet so when he comes home um those of you know my kind of setup here my craft space is off the kitchen um he's likely to be next door clattering about me reheating some pasta so i apologize now if there's a lot of teenage noise going on anyway i'm going to turn the camera down uh you can say hello to evelyn on the way by as usual and then we'll do some crafting so oh can you see her she's there you go <laughs> she's underneath behind the camera stand so let's oh my goodness let's get the grid paper in shot for starters that'd be quite helpful wouldn't it just bring that all together so i can actually see what we're doing so i've got a big pile of cards here um, i'm gonna save i'm gonna do one at a time so I'm going to start with the one that you're not going to do. So those of you who are joining me um, for the first time um, tonight, and I know there are a couple of people, um, we uh, always ha you always have a minimum of four projects in your kit. Um, and um, usually of those four, there's one that I leave with you to, to make yourself um, afterwards. Um, so um, this is the one that you're going to be making on your own afterwards with whatever you've got left over. Um, and uh, this is a very simple layout, very simple design, obviously. Um, it's just the white, white card base you've got in your kit, folded and scored. Um, you've got a um, frame that's flat down from the patterned stripy paper. And then I've cut out two shops to to put on top of that and I have put my shops on pads but you, you don't have to if you don't have got 3d pads you can put them flat down if you want but equally um you may have other bits and pieces of scraps by the end from your kit so if um if you've got um other bits of scrap and things that um that you want to make something more creative with then feel free I would love to see it um, and I'll explain at the end about where to post photos of what you've made. So Jodie's saying, my iPad is doing weird things and I think it just sent an angry emoji. Oh, it wasn't who I thought it was then. Oh, I apologise, Bernie. Um, <laughs> never mind. Don't worry, Jodie. As long as you're with us, that's all that matters. And it's lovely to have you join us. Fabulous. So this is the fourth project that you can make in your own time. So we'll put that one to one side to start with. And we're going to start with... Let me get the get the measurements out of there. We're going to start with this one. This is the zigzag card. And just make sure I can get it in in shot there. Pull it down a bit. There we go. Yeah. So um, this is the zigzag card. We did this one, um, this zigzag card at Coffee Club um, a few weeks ago using the Zoo Crew, and it was so popular. Everybody loved it so much that I thought, well. 
um, I'll, I'll show you how to make it and I'll give you the, the measurements for it as well. So obviously, given we're doing this um, over the virtual universe and um, we we are, you know, it's an evening, we're slightly time limited. It's not like we've got an all day workshop or anything. I've done some of the work of these fussy, uh, fancy folds for you. So I have done some of the cutting. So from your kit, you are going to need a piece of white cardstock that has already been cut into a diagonal with a diagonal so one like that and you should also have a corresponding um what color is this Evelyn tell me gosh I can't even think crumb cake thank you a crumb cake piece that's also been cut at an angle as well okay so I'm going to give you the measurements for these two pieces so that if you want to recreate this card you have the measurements okay so it's in inches so the white piece is cut from a standard sheet of A4 and I've I messed around with the measurements for ages to get this right because I wanted to not waste the other bit that you cut off. So this will make you two card bases if you cut cut where I tell you to cut, okay? Because you'll have the reverse, the negative side of it, if you like, um, from the sheet of A4 that creates uh, the is the other half of the card. So your white piece, you're cutting this side, the the long the the tall side. Um, of the edges measures five inches and the short side is three and a quarter inches so if you want shall I just write that down actually um, card one white is five inches by three and a quarter inches that's the so you need to measure up five inches and put a little mark there measure up three and a quarter inches there put a little mark and then and then cut between those two points <coughs> hopefully that makes sense and then your um your crumb cake layer you do exactly the same for but you've got slightly different um measurements so crumb cake is and that one is uh where are we four and three quarters of an inch by three inches okay and then we're going to uh, score the white piece and we're going to cut the crumb cake piece so i'm going to get this get the finished card out of the way for a minute so you'll need a scoreboard or a trimmer or a pair of scissors and a ruler or something and we're going to score first so let's get the cutting cutting measurement out of the way and we're going to start, let me get this the right way around. We're going to start at the, with the flat side, obviously, flat long side at the top. Okay, so you want the, 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 um, the straight edge, the long straight edge at the top of your scoreboard. And you're going to score at four inches. And then you'll need to pull out your long arm. And you're going to score at eight inches as well. So four inches and eight inches. Okay. So you've got one score at four inches, one score at eight inches. And that's all the scoring for that piece. So let me write that down as well as we go along. So on the white piece, let's do an arrow, scores at four and eight inches and then on the crumb cake piece you're going to cut because you're going to cut it into three separate mats and your cutting is going to be at three and three quarters and and you're going to do, do that twice so you're going to cut three and three quarters twice and then your final piece will be three and a half so you and you will need to cut a little piece off the end um, so so let's just put away the, the big long arm and so again you're going to put the the long straight edge at the top and you're cutting at three and three quarters of an inch square and three and three quarters of an inch again and then at 
three and a half inches. So you just need to take a little, little sliver off so that it fits into that final space. Okay. Right, I'm just going to hand the trimmer over to Evelyn. So I'll go over those measurements again um, while um, Evelyn's cutting hers as well. So with, on the white piece, with the um, long straight edge at the top of your of your scoreboard and with the scoring blade, you're scoring at four inches and you're scoring at eight inches. Okay, and that's your that's your white piece complete. And then let's go show you with the long flat piece at the top of your crumb cake um, piece as well. The same thing again. So it's like upside down, if you like, but obviously we want it to be flat against the top of the scoreboard and the cutting board. You're cutting this time at three and three quarter inches. And then you'll find that that piece fits inside your white piece and three and three quarter inches again. And then finally at three and a half inches. And then when, once you've done that, I'm going to bring the card in again because we're going to then make sure that we've got everything the right way up first before we do any embossing. So this is if you want to do embossing, you can now emboss the crumb cake pieces. OK, so you're turning it over so that you've got the tall side on the right hand side. So you need to line up your pieces of crumb cake over the top. Uh, make sure you've got them around the right way so that when you emboss them, you're embossing the, the, the top side, if that makes sense. You don't want to emboss the wrong side like I did last week, if you remember, any of those who, who were watching all my challenges on the Facebook page um, and uh, the indent went the wrong way. So it's best to line it up first. So you've got your little row of shops here. And you want um, you you want the the slope to be going from the right hand side down to the left hand side. Okay, so line your crumb cake pieces up, and then if you are embossing, which I will do, you're going to run these through the embossing folder, but the, but with these sides being the top sides. Okay, so I'm going to stack them up so I know which is the top. I'm just going to run those through the embossing folder. Just talk amongst yourselves for a minute while I run these through the embossing folder. Uh, I'm going to use pine worn type for mine because that gives a kind of rough stone effect, if you like. So that's what I'm going to do. So there's, I got that the right way around. Get this the right way around. Yeah, that's the right piece. There we go. One. Run them through the embossing folder. Like I said, if you don't want to emboss them, you you don't have to. This is not an essential part of the card. Um, but if you want that sort of wall wall background effect, then it looks quite nice if you do. And the only reason I've not got my um, my cut and emboss on the screen is because it doesn't fit very well underneath the camera. I'm afraid, so I've just got that on my craft shelf as normal. So this is the top. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just going to whiz Evelyn through as well. And if you are embossing, um, do tell us which embossing folder you're using as well. I'd love to know what, what the different patterns are that people have got. That'd be really useful and helpful as well. Can you tell us? And if you're not embossing, you can start to stick these down at this point if you want to stick them flat onto the onto the card. That's fine. Or if you want to start sticking your mosaic on first, you can do that too. Whatever you prefer. Okay, so I think I think I'm going to stick my mosaic path on first, actually, onto mine. 
So I'm going to get the card out of the way again. Um, so in your kit, you will find a strip like this of a whole 12 inch strip of, of mosaic pathing. And that's what I'm going to stick to the bottom of each of these individual pieces of crumb cake. And then once we get to the end of this step, I'm going to pause so that people can kind of catch up if they want to and let me know how you're getting on and where you've got to and stuff. So we don't race too far ahead too fast without people. So I'm going to stick my mosaic path right to the very bottom of the right to the very bottom here. And then I can just chop it off as I'm going along. So the mosaic path is the one with the ice creams on the back of it. So who's embossing and what embossing folders are you using if you are embossing? Has anyone got the brickwork or have we got um, other different designs? Anybody got any Virginia creeper or anything going up their wall? What's the variety? What have we got? Woodland texture embossing. That sounds nice. That sounds like, is that trees, Mum, or something? Is it trees? Like um, tree trunks or something like that, it sounds like. Flowers, Bernie's got flowers. Oop. Yeah, wood, woodland tree trunks, brilliant. Okay, that's good. Well, that'll be good. That's a good couple of uh, different ones already. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what they turn out like. Fantastic. So I'm just going to pause there a moment till everybody gets to the same kind of place. Anybody not embossing? Let me see if I can, I'll hold mine up to the camera so you can see there's mine. It's like, it's kind of like an Artex wall kind of texture almost, I suppose time one type it's called i think it's meant to be an old typewriter or something like that audrey audrey you're not embossing right okay cool that'd be good then to see the different different ones won't it so once you've got all your individual pieces embossed and you've got your mosaic pavement if you like um stuck on the bottom liz isn't embossing okay cool so we've got a good variety then of different ones. Um, yeah, once you've got to this point, then you want to stick them onto your zigzag. So it's, I find it's always best to just keep that white piece of card in place. And Sally's not embossing, okay. Um, and and then just take one piece off at a time and, and stick your glue or your tape or whatever, snail seal, whatever you've got on the back. Oop, that didn't work. Um, and, um, and then... Um, you know replace the piece one at a time so that you don't get um you don't get them in the wrong place or anything oh evelyn's got the wet glue so when she's finished i'll steal the wet glue back off of her what are you doing over there put your loads of glue on I'm trying to make it so it's even. oh i see she's evening out of glue she's putting like half a pot of glue on no, right i'm going to just go around the edges and a big blob in the middle like usual only thing is you do need to be careful that you are obviously putting it in the right place because we haven't yet folded and creased those um those score lines that we put in at the beginning i mean you can if you want to but i always do that bit afterwards because i find it's it's also a good way of making sure everything's stuck down so you just need to make sure that you're central to those score lines and you'll see you've got a little ooh you have got when you don't slide it off the edge a little white border around the edge of the card except for if you're a bit overexcited like me and slid it off the top and then you've got a bit of glue everywhere 
looks fine. So you should have three panels then and at that point you can then zigzag it. So I'm going to stand my card up so that you can see how the zigzag is going to go. So this one at the back, the, the, um, the first fold goes over from left to right. Squash that down, give that all a good, good press over and then back on itself again yep. on the score line and give that one a good press over as well and then if you've used wet glue like me it gives you the opportunity to kind of give every, everything a really good a good press and then you will have your little zigzag zigzag path like mine Okay, and then it's all about decoration. So again, you can just put, put the card back out flat. Now, because the layers are gonna concertina on top of each other, you obviously need to um, unfortunately have your houses flat rather than on um, dimensionals. Um, and you have got one strip of houses, one strip of shops rather, um, that gives you, might oh, have different shops actually, Evelyn. Can I borrow yours? There we go. You should have um, a strip that's got all three of these shops on them. So it's got it's got the books and the bookshop. Um, I don't know what this one is here, but it's got like little bottles and stuff on the window and the the plant shop it looks like the florists as well and so I'm just literally cutting around these um, as I say I, I'm hand cutting them but um, if you had the dies if you've got the dies you can you can use the dies to die cut them um, they're pretty simple shapes to cut out to be honest they're not too fiddly it's not it's not dreadful fussy cutting really um, and I'm just leaving a really small like I don't know, a millimetre or something border around the outside because that just gives it a, just a slightly more professional look when you're cutting out from papers. So just round the edges. And then I'm just going to layer them up wherever I think they fit best really on my on my three different panels and on your sheet of shops um, you're also going to have odd things like these this little pot with flowers so don't hesitate to cut those out and add those um, in front of the shops as well if you want to to add a little bit of extra obviously if you were doing this with the stamps um, from the set then you've got lots more combinations of things that you can add on you've got plants you've got a little um, a, a notice board so you could even then um, kind of annotate the notice board with someone's age if it was an age birthday or you know um, happy anniversary or whatever you, you wanted to say um, so you've got lots of lots of options um, with the stamp set um, even more than you've got variety in the papers um and I haven't got a complete bookshop so I'm going to cut my bookshop in half I think I have to layer it up to get it all on there I think everybody else has got a complete set of all the shops but um I ran out when it came to me so I've got I've got a top and a bottom that I'm going to have to cut up separately which is fine it'll be okay once I've stuck them together, you'll never be able to see the join. So yeah, they're nice and quick and easy to cut out these. 
not too difficult at all. So I've got my three, three different shops. And then I, let me see, where am I going to put that one? Oh, that's a bit further down, isn't it, there? Oh, I might be able to extend this one, look. I'm going to make it taller by cutting two out and putting one on top of the other. I'm going to make it taller once Evelyn's stopped using the glue. Amber, you've joined us. Brilliant. I mean, that means you must be home from work. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Um, we're only on our first card, so it's all fine. And it's a nice, simple zigzag card. Um, so just adding some glue onto the backs of the shops and sticking them central to each of these panels. My, remember, they've got to go flat down because you're going to be um, creasing the, uh, folding the card up. So if you put them down with dimensionals, unfortunately, you will find that the card won't close. So that's not what you want. I am going to make this shop taller. So I'm going to stick that bottom one on first. And this is often a, a great thing where you've got um, bits of the patterned paper that where the picture um has kind of cut off the bottom or off the edge of the papers because you can then tweak it and change it so i'm going to make my shelves i'm going to make my shop a bit bigger i'm going to make it a bit taller my bookshops i'm going to have i'm going to pull the pull the different pieces apart there we go make it a slightly taller shop to fill in the space a bit better Ha ha, there we go. You'd never know, look. Um, you um, also get, as part of the sweet share, you get some of the little um, flat daisy embellishments as well. So if you've got any of those, or if you've got any of the little flat daisy embellishments from the last time we used them, um, then you can add the flat daisy embellishments to things like the window boxes to the little pots with flowers, to the wreaths around the door, any of those kind of places. Or if you've got any other kind of little um, gems and daisy embellishments that you want to add in, then you can do that as well because these, these flat kind of daisy flowers go quite nicely actually on this with this suite. It's quite pretty. So I've just cut out, look, a little a little pot plant. So I'm going to stick that one in the front here as well, um, just to give a bit more depth to the picture. So, and then once I've done this one, we will stop and take stock for a moment, and I will um, get some uh, get raffle prizes out. Our first lot of raffle prizes. So there we go. So once it's done. There it is flat down and there it is zigzagged so you can see what it looks like. And there's the measurements as well, so you can see that too. So just leave those bits up there for a moment. Amber's eating supper first. And Alexander's just come in from his driving lesson, so he's eating his supper first as well. Not that he's joining us for any carb making, obviously. Heaven forbid. <laughs> okay. Right, so how's everybody getting on? I'm not expecting you to finish the shops or anything at this point, but is everybody okay? If you're all right, give me some thumbs up and then I will get the raffle prizes out. Evelyn's giving me thumbs up from the other side of the table, so that's good. Yep, getting some thumbs up, fantastic. Brilliant. Okay, right. We'll just leave those there for a moment while I just grab the raffle prizes for tonight out then. So again, if you've not joined us before, somewhere in your kit, you will find a raffle ticket. Um, it's what colour is that? Oh, are they up um, orange. orange. They're orange raffle tickets tonight. And I've got, I'm going to pull out three different prizes. So we've got three, we will have three winners tonight. So if you're here, shout out, it's me. And also um, tell me what prize you would like. If you're watching on the replay, you have one month to claim your prize. So until Card Club next month, this time next month, you have to claim your prize. 
um and we did have one unclaimed prize um last month so um it's gone i'm afraid it's gone back in jojo's asking what have you done for a sentiment so actually as of yet i haven't done a sentiment for this one but um i um would probably do a happy birthday um my top five oh Evelyn, do me a favour. We've got that other card. So we we used this suite for um, coffee club earlier on in the month. So I'll show you what I put on the card that we made earlier on in the month. Um, it's my mother-in-law's birthday on Monday. Monday, yeah. Um, so I made her this one. Happy birthday, Mum! And um, we made the little movable movable blind on the on the card. Um, so that's what I'd probably put a kind of happy birthday, that sort of size, I, I, probably above one of the shops somewhere, I would imagine. Um, you'll see, though, on the card that we're not going to make tonight, I did actually put put the sentiment, which I hand wrote, actually, um, just across the, the border at the top of the shop. So you can you can you could stamp across there as much as you could um, hand write as well. So lots, quite a lot of options, actually, with this suite. So, yeah, there we go. That's that one. Right, let's move these ones out of the way for a minute. Okay, so prizes for um, this one. We've got some um, Baker's Twine Essential. So it's um, the linen coloured twine. We've got a clear block A, which is really, really handy for those tiny little stamps. Um, so little flowers, little leaves, holly leaves, things like that. You like the handwritten one? Oh, good. That's good. And I've got a pack of resin stars as well. Um, yellow, green, blue and red. So these are our three raffle prizes for tonight. So if you're in the room, um, shout out that you've won and tell me what you want to, to as your prize. And if you're on replay and it's less than a month, then tell me that you've won on replay. Also, oh, they're all mixed up and put together. Look, they've all jumped on top of each other. Let's just mix. Open that a minute. Right, okay. Prize goes to number, number, number. Oops, there it is. 270. So if you're 270... Tell me what you would like, please. Let me see if I can find my rough ticket. Make sure it's not me. All the kits are just made up at random. So I have got a raffle ticket in my kit as well. And it is 273, look. So it's not me. It's not me. And I'll keep my raffle ticket to one side to make sure that I don't miss a prize going out. So if it's you and you're in the room, shout out what you'd like. And I will get a bit of washi tape to stick on the prize. Oh, it's Liz. And Liz would like the clear block. Good choice, Liz. It's yours. Right then. Brilliant. Well done. There we go. There we go. Liz, the clear block is yours. It will be winging its way to you. Right, let's put that one out of the way. So that is two cards that we've covered. We'll come back for another raffle prize later on this evening. Okay, I'm going to do... Um, is everybody ready to move on, by the way? Whoop, whoop, it's Liz. Yay! <laughs> um, give me some thumbs up if you're ready to move on to card number two. I'll put that one down so you can see what it is. Yeah, fab, good. Yep, 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 yep. Wonderful. Okay, right, we'll go on to card number two then. Card number two is something completely different. I think this one's called a diamond flap card, I think, something like that. I'm trying to remember now um, from when I, I researched this one. Um, but it's really easy to do. And again, you could use this for loads of different ideas. Um, so very, very simple to make. So you will have not a full card base. You've got a piece. It's like a quarter of a sheet of A4 in... Um, what colour is that? Um, Can't remember. Evergreen. evergreen? Even, no, it's not even evergreen. Can't remember. Let me look it up. So that'll annoy me if I don't know what colour it is. No, it's not that. It is... 
Let me have a look and try and remember. Bear with me while I flick through the catalogue a minute. It is, it is, it is, it is. Shaded spruce, obviously. It's shaded spruce is the colour. So you've got um, a single piece of a quarter cardstock. Thank you, Amber. You are correct. It is shaded spruce. Good guess. Shaded spruce. Then the next bit you've got is a piece of white card that fits just inside to create a bit of a border. Oh no, mum stuck her crumb cake on the wrong side of the second side. Oh dear. Um, well, I guess you could make it zigzaggy with a bit on the front and a bit on the back, maybe, possibly. Um, we did that with our, our um, Zany Zoo card, I remember, actually. So maybe it will work still. Um, and then you've got, let me see what other bits you need. You need a piece of car, a patterned paper that's got lots of little mini shops all over it. And you need, um, what else do you need? Here we go. We need um, a um, hexagon shape cut from um, Flirty Flamingo Pink and it might be on another big strip of cards because my was right hang on then and then I've got to fish around to find some decoration in a minute there must be some decoration in here somewhere there it is and you'll also have um, probably a couple of bits of shop as well, various different shops. So um, I use the bakery um, on mine, so I'll probably use the bakery again on, on this one. So you've got bakery, uh, I don't know what that, pasta you think that is? Oh yeah, it's got a fork. Pasta shop and a sweetie and ice cream shop, so all on a strip. So one of, the, one of those you need as well to go on the front. Okay. I'm going to put those other bits back in there in a minute so I don't lose them. So the first thing you need to do is to create the triangles. So we're going to put our shops out of the way. We're going to put the um, flirty flamingo hexagon out of the way as well. And incidentally, um, that one came from the... Uh, what is that one called? Countryside Corners, that's a Countryside Corner shape. Um, if you remember, we did those with the blue patterned papers a few months ago, so that's all that one's come from. So put that one out of the way as well. What you're gonna need for the triangles is this piece of um, patterned paper that's got the tiny little shops all over it, okay? So I'm just gonna get the card and the other bits out of the way so I can really show you what to do. So. What you need to do is to turn that piece over and you'll have a blue kind of silhouette type thing on the back of it. And you're going to start by drawing diagonal lines corner to corner to create four triangles. You're actually only going to use two of them, um, but you, you need to be able to draw the line first. If you go straight for your um, trimmer and straight away cut, um, you, you'll you find that you won't be able to get the measurement right. You won't be able to measure the triangle. So you need to draw on the back of the paper first. And then once you've got the shapes, then you can cut them out. So you can cut them out using the trimmer, which I will do with mine. And you just put them into the um, cutting trough so that each end is um, within the cutting trough so that you get... Hmm. Why are my blades not sitting down? My cutting blades just come out of my trimmer, so that's very unhelpful. Come on, go back in. There we go. There we go. Right, so let's start again. Let's get it in the cutting channel there. I'm just going to cut straight down and then again straight down and you want the top triangle and you want the bottom triangle so you don't want the side triangles just the top and the bottom is what you want 
and you want them um, houses side up as well uh, houses shops shop side up like that okay so you've got your two triangles there so you've got rid of those side ones so I'll just hang on a minute while while everybody does that and you've got your two triangles once you've once you've got the, all the pieces and you've cut out your triangles um, give me some thumbs up so I know to move on Yep, brilliant. Some speedy crafters out there tonight. That's great. There's no rush. We can take our time with this bit. It's absolutely fine. Okay. And then... I'm going to grab the trimmer back from Evelyn. Once you've done that, then you need to score on the um, flat edges. So if you've got your shops up the right way, you're going to score along the top of the flat edge and along the bottom of the flat edge. OK, so I'll show you what I mean. So I've put those, that one there so the shops are still the right way up. So you're going to put it in the trimmer and you just want to go to that very first line you can't you can't line it up with the top because it's a triangle it's not it's not got a flat edge at the top so you want to line it up with that first first line there which is a quarter of an inch and you're just going to put the trimmer down and then do a very light score line so that you've got something to fold against and then it will fold over like that okay and then you're going to do the exact same with the bottom of the opposite piece so get it against that quarter inch line put the trimmer down and then just score it lightly and then fold it over and crease it so that you've got the top and bottom like that there we go so if you then put your triangles back together again you should have the top of your top triangle scored and folded over and the bottom of your bottom triangle scored and folded over at a quarter of an inch okay So just give everybody a minute to do those two and then you're going to bring back in your piece of um evening evergreen and was it evening evergreen what did we decide no shaded spruce and your white card you're going to need those two pieces next to be able to kind of stick all this together okay And so what you're going to do then is you're going to put some adhesive along that little score line that you've created along that the bottom and the top there you don't need to go right to the edge because you are going to trim a bit off but you do want to go just along that score line and then take your white card and make sure it's central centrally placed on on that piece of white card so that it folds over to the front and just press it down and then you're going to do exactly the same at the top as well so a little bit of glue on that flap that you've kind of got created through the score line there and you just want it on the underside just on that little flap that you've created don't stick it on the triangle itself because you want that to be able to move so just centrally centrally over there glue on my finger so you've then got 
with your shops all still the right way up. Ooh, got a little bit of glue too much on there. You've got one flap you've got at the top and you've got one flap at the bottom. Okay. So just leave that a minute while you attach those triangular flaps to the card. And do be careful because as you can see, I've got a bit too much glue on mine. I'm probably going to have to wait for that to dry to be able to get it off because I don't think it's going to pick up. Is it going to pick up? Worked perfectly on my on my sample card, isn't that typical? Not, I didn't put too much glue on it or anything. I'm just going to have to wait for it to dry, I think, and then I'll be able to rub it off with my eraser rubber, my glue rubber. Anyway, once you've got those two triangles stuck on the back, if you need to trim off any of the corners, trim off the corners. If you don't, brilliant. Um, you're going to stick glue all over the back or um, tape or seal, snail, whatever, and um, stick it flat down to your to your green base so and again just make sure that you don't get your glue over the top of um, the flaps at all the triangular flaps because you don't want them to not then be able to close and you're just sticking this centrally in the middle of that green card And then you've got one flap that comes up and one flap that comes down. Okay. And they won't meet in the middle. You don't want them to meet in the middle because your um, your little shop, your bit, your shop that you're going to cut out is going to cover over that gap. So um, that's fine, and that will create your opening to the card. So that's exactly what you want. And just make sure those those. Um, Flaps are stuck, stuck down nicely from the triangles. And then you can bring back in your, um, your hexagonal shape. And that you're going to stick over the top of the triangles, but obviously you only want it, let me bring my sample card back in, um, you only want it stuck to one triangle. So you want it either stuck to the top or stuck to the bottom, depending on which way you want your your um, flap to open. In fact, I think what I might do is because I've got too much glue on this top bit, I'm going to glue that top triangle down, I think. And then it doesn't matter. Here you are, I'll show you a way to cover up your mistakes. Look, I'm going to I'm going to stick this top one flat down onto the card. And then it doesn't matter that I got a bit too much glue I'm just going to have this bottom triangle is going to be the one that's going to move on this card that way so that it opens for writing in so what you want to do is work out where it's going to sit centrally over the top of those two triangles and then you're only gluing obviously the um the bottom of that triangle so what I did when I was doing my sample was um, I placed it on top of the two triangles and then I just made a little mark lift, lifting the, the um, flirty flamingo up a bit and just making a few marks underneath so that I can see where my glue needs to go on the triangle because I don't want my pencil lines to um, to show but I want to make sure that I don't put too much glue on either and that it then ends up covering over, um, you know, covering a bit that I don't want glue, glue put on because I don't want it to obviously stick firmly. There we go. So then you've created your, your a flap opening. So for the sample that I did, um, my shop lifts upwards. But for the one that I'm just doing now, because I I messed it up with my glue, my flap's going downwards instead. So it doesn't matter. It's up to you how you want it to, to be. And then all you need to do is to cut out one of your shops and add your shop. So I'm going to cut out the bakery again. 
Um, and you can see there's the little, that's the little um, notice board that would go outside the shop as well. So you can cut that one out as well if you want to, to add a little extra dimension. And this card, because you've got a nice flat front now, you can, um, you can add your shop on using dimensionals if you want to, um, to give it a bit more depth to the front. Um, you don't need to worry about it folding up or anything, so that's fine. So again, I'm just literally cutting around the outside, leaving a little bit of a white border. So there's just a bit of a, a gap around the edge. And the flowers, when you get to the flowers, whether you're on flower pots or whether it's just the flowers at the base of the shop like this one, um, I wouldn't be too precious about that. I really, I really wouldn't worry too much. If you're a huge fussy cutter, you could cut round each individual little leaf if you wanted to, but I can't be bothered, to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to really add loads to it. So um, I'm just going to stick that there and I'm going to put some 3D pads behind um, my um, my shop before I stick my shop on. And again, remember, you're just wanting to make sure that you've got 3D pads behind the bit that's actually going to stick to the to the flap don't put 3d pads behind the bit that's going to be stuck that's going to end up sticking itself to your white of your card that would not be good because then you will have inadvertently completely sealed your card and that is not what you want to do obviously you want it to still be able to move so sticking it in the middle again of the of that flap there we go and then my flap still opens Still managed to get a bit of glue on it, honestly. I'm a bit hopeless tonight. Um, right, let me see if I can find a glue rubber. Let's try that one. Let's see if I can get it off using that one. Oh, yeah, it's coming off. It's fine. It's fine. There we go. Get rid of that nasty mark. We don't want that. There we go. And then I'm just going to cut out my little clapperboard thing as well little notice board that goes out the front again it's really nice straight line fuss, no uh, fiddly corner fussy cutting it's all straight lines really easy before you ask amber if you were um you might have missed a bit at the beginning so i know you're a fussy cutting hater um there are dies that go with this set as well in case you're wondering ha <laughs> ha so there we go. So I'm going to stick stick my little um, sandwich board outside the front as well. Again, on a little 3D pad. Stick it on a mini dimensional this time. There we go. And I think, um, Jodie, for um, this one, if I was thinking about where would I put the sentiment on this one, um, because you've got a nice, um, clean blind on the shop I'd probably put my sentiment across there I think um I mean I think these are just fun cards for saying hello saying thanks um the last card you'll see in a moment is a voucher card so great if you've got a shop voucher that you're putting in um but equally I think they're you know a bit of fun for um uh birthdays and things as well just something different really Amber says, dies. Mm, more worried about cutting my fingers off tonight, to be honest. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Good job it's square square sides then, really. <laughs> OK, so there we go. We've got both, both types of opening. Flap up, flap down. Your choice. It works even if you make a mistake and put too much glue on it, look. So there we go. So we'll put those two to one side while you're finishing up with those. And let's have another raffle prize, shall we? Okay, what did I do with the raffle prize? There they are. So we've got left the resin stars and the linen thread. Let's have a look. Ooh. Crowded up together there. So I've got some more. Okay, right. And we've got number 263. If you are 263, shout now and I will put your name on a raffle prize and tell me what you'd like. 263. Two, 
263. Oh, it's mum, stars. Brilliant, yeah. The stars are yours. There we go. Well done. Fantastic. Okay. So just the linen thread to go. So we'll leave that. Okay. So how are people getting on? When you've when you've got to the end of this one, give me some thumbs up again. And then we've just got one more to make. And then I, which is a super clever card, I think. And then I'll show you um, the extra bonus card that I've got and um, that I've done the video for on YouTube. So I've had a couple of thumbs up. Hang on a minute. Is the next one again, I've done the cutting for you, but I have got the measurements. So I'm going to share the measurements with you as well. So that if you want to repeat it, you can repeat it pretty easily. I think this one you can probably work out the measurements without having to to worry about me writing it down. Okay, let's put that one to one side as well. Okay, so the last card that we're going to do is this one. Looks kind of straightforward. Let me see if I've got there's the measurements. Let's get that out of the way a minute. So it looks kind of straightforward and it is um, a standard card inside. So you can you can write on the inside, but it's also got this cute little fold out piece on the front and there's a flap on it. So you can stick a gift card inside the flap. So it's a gift card greetings card all in one. A gift card and greetings card all in one. So yes, you've got the flap on the front and it's a standard greetings card inside as well. That's quite cool. So you will need a card, standard card base, which is crushed curry. You will need um, your piece of um, pumpkin pie orange card as well. Both of these have been cut from a piece of A4 and I will give you the measurements in just a moment. And then you will basically need all the rest of your bits of patterned paper, but you should have a piece of um, yellow, uh, I don't even know what you call that. What is that kind of grid paper almost? Then you should have two, um, two pieces of, we've well, got three pieces cut from ice cream paper ice creams and desserts and you're going to use two of them on the reverse side on the mosaic tile side and one on the ice cream side then you've got a couple of extra shops which you can choose which ones to, to cut out and you should also have last but not least um, a little strip of the yellow grid paper as well <coughs> And those are all the components that you need, okay? But we're going to start right at the beginning. So we're just going to start with the card base first, which is like the easiest, easiest thing ever. So let me get all those other little bits out of the way first. So my, all of my standard card bases um, fit inside a C6 envelope. So they fit inside our standard letter envelopes. But because I can't bear the thought of any waste card, these are half a piece of A4. You can cut it lengthwise or widthwise and crease it in the middle and it will give you the right size. It doesn't matter. OK, so this is half a sheet of A4 folded in half and creased. And then on top of that, you are going to stick flat down on the card front your yellow gridded piece of patterned paper so i'm just going to glue that and stick that down straight flat on the card front no messing around straight on the front of the card 
there will be a little border around the edges as there always is for neatness but other than that flat down on the card front nothing extra fancy at all with that bit so we'll make these up as separate components and then we'll stick it together once we've got all the the individual components if you like so there's your card your actual card base finished that's done so put that to one side and then you're going to need your um, piece of um, pumpkin pie so again I'm going to tell you um, the measurements that I used for this because you will see that you've got three score lines on this piece of pumpkin pie um, which we're going to fold up in a moment but I'll give you the measurements for this first so if you want to replicate this card um, now's the time to get your pen out and a bit of paper so that you can write down the measurements and I will write them down along here as well so again, you if you haven't got something to write down with, then you can also take a screenshot or something. So this is card number three. And you've got standard card base. That's this one, which is the, the um, crushed curry. And then you've got for pumpkin pie, you've got half a sheet of A4. So if you imagine this is a whole sheet of A4, this is cut lengthways, so it's half a sheet of A4 cut on the short side. So let me borrow Evelyn's a minute so I can show you. There you go. It would be a sheet of A4 and you've cut it in two. Yep. On the short side. And then you've got three score lines. So you score at... 7.5 centimetres, this is all centimetres, 15 centimetres, 22.5 centimetres, and then you cut at 25.5 centimetres. Now, I've done all of that for you, but if you want to replicate it, that's how you would replicate it. So you'd be scoring at 7.5, 15 and 22.5 and then you cut at 25.5 so you just cut this end bit off and the, the end bit you're cutting off is to create the pocket okay so that's all it does is it gives you the ability to create the the pocket okay so then what you're going to do is add your patterned paper and then create your little pocket so we've got a piece of patterned paper there which is our mosaic paper and a piece of pattern paper at the end that is the mosaic piece. And the piece in the middle is going to be um, the little cakes and bread and ice cream and whatever else it might be. And then keep hold of your little yellow piece, um, your yellow little grid slip, because that's going to go on the other side of the pocket. So we'll stick these bits of patterned paper on first and then we'll fold it all up and add the add the pocket okay because this is the easiest way to see which side your patterned papers need to go so you stick them all on the same side of your um of your uh, pumpkin pie so obviously these are going in the biggest sections between the grid the the um score lines And you're just sticking them all flat down because, again, they're going to be folded up just like that first card. You're going to fold all these up. So if you use 3D pads at this point, you will find that the um, card doesn't fold flat, which is obviously not what you want. So just stick them all down flat to your card. And then you're going to... To crease them if I can find my bone folder there it is okay so you're going to fold that flap over first and crease that and then you can stick your piece of patterned paper onto that flap now that you've folded it over so you haven't stuck the flap yet you just 
just folded it and creased it to make sure that you get this little piece of um, yellow grid on the right side of the flap. That's how it's going to look. And then to stick that flap down, you want a tiny piece down each side. So I would recommend, again, speaking from experience of having messed it up myself, I would recommend some tear and tape. Um, so rather than wet glue, use a bit of tear and tape because you can get it right up against the edge so that there's plenty of room for you, for your greeting card uh, your gift card, sorry, to be able to go inside the pocket. So if you use um, wet glue, there's a real temptation to put too much on and then it will squidge out the sides and disaster will occur, let me tell you. She says, speaking from experience as always. So a bit of tear and tape, top and bottom, fold it over and then you've, you've created your little pocket ready for your ready for your card. Oops. And there's all those snips. And Cal just pulls there a minute <coughs> before we do any folding. So you've got your card base. Let's do a quick recap. You've got your card base, scored, folded in half, piece of yellow grid on the top, finished. That's your card base finished. Your um, piece of card that you're going to make the gift card holder from separate piece it's a half a sheet of a4 cut lengthways so with the short side at the top and then it's scored at seven and a half 15 22 and a half all centimeters and cut so you cut the last little bit off at 25 and a half centimeters and then stick all your bits of pattern paper on with it flat and open. Fold your pocket over and add your strip of pattern paper and glue top and bottom of your pocket. Okay. And then the final thing to do before you stick it all together is to fold your gift card holder. So holding onto the pocket, you're going to fold over on top of it so the pocket goes inside crease that one and then just like the first card you're folding back on itself again and then crease that one and then your gift card holder will open out like that okay and then you just need to mount this on the front of your card and add your decoration so um, same again, I'm going to use tear and tape on here. I don't want to make it too messy. I don't want to get too much glue on it. I do want to make sure that um, it stays put on the card front, but I just don't want to get a load of glue squidging out of it or anything like that. So I'm going to stick some, there you go. Um, some tear and tape. And I'm going to hover it over the top before I stick it down. Make sure that you've got your gift card holder the right way round before you stick it. So just check and make sure it opens the right way. And I know it sounds daft, but again, honestly, I've seen people do it. I've done it myself. Make sure your actual card base opens the right way round before you go and stick it. And if you've got grid paper and you can use the grids to line up roughly where the centre of that card is then all the better really so it just makes it easy for yourself and you've got grids on the pattern paper so you can use those as well to help guide you and then you know that it's opening up the right way for you and then the only thing you've got left to do is to um, find a shop to glue on the front whichever shop you want to cut out and stick on the front so what have I got here so let's find that little sweetie sweetie ice cream shop this is you see this is one that's got um like a window box kind of effect on the top and all I'm gonna do is a bit of wiggling over the top I am not gonna go mad about worrying about fussy cutting all the individual leaves if that's your thing then go for it I'm pleased for you 
but that is not my kind of thing so I'm just going to have a little wiggle over the top and then fussy cut I say fussy straight cut shouldn't even be called fussy cut should it straight cut the sides off with a tiny bit of white border for neatness that's all really really simple get rid of all those bits and then I'm going to stick some 3d pads on the back of this one as well and again just need to make sure that you've, your your 3d pads are going kind of well inside the shop so that they're you know they're not if you if your shop hangs over the edges oops sorry so the um the blind edges kind of hang over the edges of the of the the um gift card holder then obviously you don't want any um 3d pads stuck in the wrong place so that your you know you end up with your card all stuck together by accident that would not be good Oop. and stick that in the middle of your pocket on the front there there we go and again it's got a nice blind so you could easily write a happy or stamp happy birthday on there equally you could stamp happy birthday on the top or the bottom of the actual front piece of the card as well actually because there's plenty of room there so that's a really really cool really easy really easy fancy fold this would be a brilliant one to do for Christmas as well. Um, if I mean, if you're like me and you've got lots of gift cards, like we've got older nephews and nieces that I do gift cards for now, um, you know, you can send them their Christmas card and their gift all in one go. Because you've got your gift card holder on the front and your Christmas card. You could stick some. Uh, um, you could have another Christmas stamped scene or die cut or um, patterned paper inside you, you don't have to leave it plain obviously if you don't want to so and you could again you can add more embellishment if you want to add some little um, of those daisy embellishments to the flowers on the roof um, and the window box the, the roof boxes then you could do that as well if you wanted to give a bit more depth and you might well find that um, at the end of your kit you've got kind of a couple of perhaps um, odd bits of shop left so um, if you want to if you get if you're able to make something with those and then share what you make we'd love to see it so that's it for the cards so let's bring in what we've made so we've got all of them on here all of we've got the zigzag we've got those three and then this is the final one actually I'm going to stick the big zigzag down here that's the final one that um you can make um yourself in, after tonight okay so we've got one more raffle prize to draw and then I've got a bit of housekeeping stuff to do and I've also got the um the extra bonus project to show you as well so our final raffle prize is the um linen thread so let's see who's going to win the linen thread. We've got let's have that one there as he's hiding. So the linen thread, the winner is 275. Who's got 275? Whoever you are, you've got the linen thread. Shout now if that one's yours. And then I'll tell you about some other ways to win prizes and things as well. So 275, who's got 275? Oh, 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 it's Jody. Yahoo! Wonderful, that's brilliant. Jody, the linen thread is yours. There you go. Oh, that's fantastic. I've given away all my all my prizes tonight. I love it when I give away all the prizes on the night. That's so brilliant. Brilliant. Right, okay, so well done, Liz, well done, Mum, well done, Jody. That's fantastic. Um, so there we go that's the cards that we've made tonight you are welcome you're absolutely welcome and um, there's the, the four cards that we've made tonight I'm just going to put those to one side a moment because I want to show you the bonus card because I'm really rather pleased with this I have to tell you I've wanted to make this bonus card for ages since I've seen it coming out you know 
and we've got um, a demonstrator um, Facebook group where people share the projects they're making and honestly there are some incredibly clever people on there um, but there this is also a card that I've been seeing like on Pinterest and stuff so I'm sure you some of you will have seen it before um, it's called the triple tier slider card so it starts life like that so a flat card that you can put in in an envelope in a c6 envelope it's got its own little stand look on the back so you can stand it up when you receive it as a card in the post it stands on its own doesn't need any effort but if you pull the tabs at the top whee, up comes three tiers of shops look isn't that clever i love it I reckon this would make an amazing birthday cake card, don't you? Three-tiered birthday cake card. I think it's fantastic. So, and it, honestly, it is so easy to do. I have to tell you, it really is very, very simple to do. Once you understand the concept of how you make it, um, it's the kind of thing you can make loads of. And I will show you if I can find where I've put it. I've got another version of this to show you as well. Um, here it is. Um, so I've got another version um, that I made from last month's um, uh, project papers, which was the uh, Zoo Crew. Um, I showed these to Darren, and Darren reckons he prefers the Zoo Crew to the shops, but that may be just a bloke thing, I don't know. But again, it's it folds flat. I've got two lots of ribbon on the top of this one because I, I wanted lots. Um, and we've got, we've got the animals the partying animals and I, my plan is to put um, I'll probably give this to one of the nephew the younger nephews or nieces for their birthday so I'll probably have a happy birthday here and then their age inside so that they, they discover their age when it pops up I think probably but again it slides in and out really easy so really pleased with that and there's the zoo crew one sorry I like that you want you like this one Evelyn's saying she likes the zoo crew one as well it's really cute, but honestly, it's it's so simple to do. Oh, thanks, Jodie. Yeah, so simple to do. So if you hop on over to the YouTube channel, um, Papercraft with Jenny, um, you will find um, you'll find it over there. So um, yeah, it's, uh, all the instructions are, are there, and that's um, the project that goes with the sweet share for this month as well. So let's put those ones back down there. Right, I'll just um, pull my chair back a little bit, and I will turn the camera back around a minute. Um, hold, bear with me a minute. Let's, if I can find out to turn the camera around, there it is. There's the button. There we go. Hello, hello. Okay, everyone's back with me. Oh gosh, having a bad hair moment. I think been leaning over the camera too much. Um, so yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Um, there are, as always, a couple more ways that you can win prizes um, linked to tonight. So. As soon as this is finished and I've saved the video, I will put a new post in the Facebook group um, with a photo of all these cards that we've made. And um, if you would like to enter the free prize draw that I will draw on Sunday night, um, if you take a photograph of the projects that you've made tonight and stick that in the comments, so put your photograph in the comments, um, then your name will go into the prize draw as well. And um, also anybody who's placed an order with me this month. So whether you've placed an order for products, um, the sweet share, whether you've ordered online, whether you've ordered through me, however you've ordered, your name goes into the uh, second prize draw and I'll be drawing that one on Sunday night as well. So um, it will probably be back to the usual kind of time on Sunday night. So it'll be around kind of dinner time seven ish something like that i'll do a quick five minute kind of facebook live um but obviously it'll be on there so um your if your name's pulled out of the hat then you will know that you have won and there'll be a couple of extra prizes for for that as well um, there's still competitions and fun things going on on the Facebook page as well. So do feel free to go over uh, um, after this and check through all the last posts and see if there's anything you've missed. I, I make no apologies. There's loads of chat about Christmas on there, I'm afraid, because I'm in full on Christmas workshop preparation mode. Um, I know that there's quite a few people that can't make the date of the all day Christmas extravaganza. Um, and I apologise for that. It was it was difficult to get venue, me available, fitting in with everything, having enough time for prep and all that kind of stuff as well. So um, it is what it is, I'm afraid. 
but I am going to be running as I've done for the last few years and it's been so well received I thought I'd keep doing it so I am going to run a stamper stack where you'll be making a whole bunch of cards um, and that will be at the end of November so plenty of, of time for that one um, again I'll send out communications to everybody who's on the mailing list so if you're not on the mailing list go over to my blog and get signed on or email me and say put me on the mailing list um, and if you get emails from me every Monday morning you're on the mailing list um, so there'll be details of that so there will be an in-person version of the Stamper Stack and there will be an online version of the Stamper Stack as well um, so that will be fine that will be fun um, and what else was I going to say oh and I'll be also doing uh, I've got a party night planned as well like we had last year where we did we did silly things we probably do bingo again um, and we'll do mystery card making so that was what really good fun last year where you grab a whole load of pre-cut pre-measured pre-die cut bits and pieces from your stash and then we make it up into a Christmas card together um, but I don't show you what the card looks like so you just have to trust me to put things in the right place and then we'll see what everyone's cards looks like at the end um, and so we'll do all of that and have some more raffle prizes and fun and games and stuff and we will I will also be doing mini makes through December mini makes for those of you who've not done mini makes with me before I do one project a night um, it's usually sort of seven o'clock um, they're last minute crafting things so it might be a decoration it might be a card it might be um, uh, what else have we done we've done packaging we've done table decorations we've done candle decorating all kinds of things but the most important key ingredient is it'll be you using things out of your stash so stuff that you've already got in your stash at home that you're thinking god i've had this paper for five years i don't know what to do with it this will be your opportunity to drag out stuff out of your stash and use what you've got so it's free completely free and it'll be every thursday night um going through December so just some ideas for last minute crafting really but using stuff you've got so it won't cost you anything and it's just a load of free ideas really and, and people can join in and craft along with me as well so all of that to curb in the run up to Christmas if you're signed up for the Christmas extravaganza yippee yeah uh, I'm really looking forward to it can't wait um I'm going to be starting to prep kits this week so um that's really exciting because all of the uh, stock should be arriving uh, this week so that's really I really love that bit that's what, one of my favorite bits really um, and if you're not I hope you can join me for one of the other Christmas workshops in the run-up to Christmas um, and obviously we've still got coffee clubs we've still got card monthly card clubs this one as well um, so yeah come and join in basically and like I said there'll be details about that joining offer coming out in the mail-in um, over the next couple of days and I'll put some stuff on the Facebook page as well um, so if you've got any thoughts on you've got a big order to place and you want to sign up now's the time to do it because it is a really good offer okay I'll shut up now let you all get back to your lives um, but thanks for joining me take care night everybody bye bye <laughs>